स्थापकाय च धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू द स्टडी ऑफ भगवत गीता वी शल नाउ चैंट टू वर्सेस फ्रॉम द मेडिटेशन ऑन भगवत गीता यू कैन जॉइन मी ओ भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतावर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वाम अनुसंदधामी भगवद्गीते भवत्वेशिनी वसुदेवसुत देवं सचाणो रमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगदुर in the last session we were discussing the first second and third verse of the second chapter though we had discussed extensively on the second and third verses of the second chapter i had told you that up to the next six or seven verses it is again the depression and crying and weeping of arjuna but these two wonderful verses have been told by none other than the great swami vivekananda as the essence of bhagavad gita and it removes the depression the stupor the tamas of arjuna so if we can make a deeper study of this verse it also can remove that kind of lethargy the laziness the tamas which is in our heart and propel us towards spiritual enlightenment that's why i told you in the last verse i'm going to revise it again so that it will be very beneficial now let me take up the first verse sanjay uvach tam tatha kripaya vishtam ashrupurna kulekshanam vishidanta midam vakyam uvacha madusudana sanjaya is telling to dhritarashtra seeing arjuna overwhelmed with pity 
Arjuna's mind grief stricken and his eyes full of tears Shri Krishna spoke the following words saying the great warrior the great courageous person of that time in tears and such pathetic condition now krishna starts speaking to describe arjuna's feelings sanjaya uses the word kripaya kripa meaning pity or compassion this word compassion is of two kinds you can't call this state of arjuna is compassion why because there are two ways you can interpret it the compassion is of two kinds one is the divine compassion that god and the saintly persons those who have realized god they feel towards the soul in the material realm on seeing their sufferings in separation to god this has to be noticed because people are separated from god they don't remember god they get they get into miseries they get into trouble seeing their pathetic condition so god shows divine compassion and the saints and the realized soul also feel that compassion towards the soul in the material realm on seeing their suff sufferings in separation to god then what is the other thing which we have to differentiate the other is the material compassion that we feel upon seeing the bodily distress of others i think i've taken up this difference between compassion and attachment and i have explained it in detail so if i go again i will be i think uh, diver diverging from the main topic let me not go to that i can just give you the difference a little difference and what is that attachment is showing itself as compassion towards the thing when we depend upon a person or a thing psychologically and emotionally upon some person or something i am attached to selfishly with selfishness if i get something that psychological dependence comes out as compassion or pity and all those things that is called maya god has kept that to serve our own kith and kin the people whom we depend upon then what is compassion separate from this attachment compassion or daya is the thing which comes out of a strong mind a mind which is full which it which doesn't need anything there is no need it is unconditional true love to others without any selfishness so it is shown to all the people irrespective of creed caste race color country no difference at all it's unconditional so it is it flows towards everybody but attachment and maya only to their own kith and kin their own people whom they depend upon so that is maya that is the difference that is the attachment and compassion so we should know the difference so now let us see material compassion or maya or attachment yes it's a noble sentiment we have to feel pity we have to help others but it is not perfectly directed how can you give an example it is like being obsessed with the health of the car your vehicle while the driver sitting within is famished for food could you catch that point it is just like you are very much concerned about your material thing that is the car but you are not worried about the driver while he is famished i will just give you an example a very 
funny example there was one great saint called narayana guru in southern part of india in kerala it became very popular and people used to worship him like a great soul so it was his birthday thousands of people have gathered to celebrate his birthday that great guru or the swami is sitting with the, within his room here people are doing conducting satsangs bhajans they are offering so many varieties of food material sweets in front of the photo of narayana guru and they are doing bhajans and praising and offering and everything but here inside the swami is in hunger he is tired he wants something to eat but they are not giving him but they are feeding the photo and everything so he came out you are feeding to my photo i am very hungry please give me some food <laughs> it's just like that so you can i will take you through that uh, thing it's so funny this material compassion is directed misdirected how it is like being obsessed with the health of the car while the driver sitting within is famished for food so arjuna here is experiencing this second kind of sentiment all that pity all that compassion all that kripaya kripa is only for his own teacher his own kith and kin because he saw that relatives is uh, genetics is biological connection that's why he is feeling otherwise if it was somebody else it would have not come out arjuna is experiencing this second kind of sentiment is overwhelmed with material pity towards the enemies gathered for battle the fact that arjuna is overcome by grief and despair shows that he is himself in dire need of compassion because it is coming out of a weak mind so it cannot be called compassion because he himself is distressed he himself is in trouble he needs compassion so the lord will now pour his compassion in the form of bhagavad gita whatever that might be therefore the idea of his being merciful upon others is meaningless in this verse shri krishna is addressed as madhusudana i told you in the last class madhusudana is one who had slayed or killed a demon called madhu that's why krishna gets the name madhusudana he had slayed the demon madhu and hence gotten the name madhusudana or slayer of madhu demon here what is he going to slay why why is this see every word because krishna or vishnu has thousand names only few names are selected as i told you because in this context it is going to portray some special meaning what is it portraying here why this word madhusudana was used by great vyasacharya while composing these verses vyasa maharshi is a great poet so now every word has something deep meaning so here madhusudana or slayer of madhu demon here he is about to slay the demon of doubt which is come which has come to arjuna and also if we read bhagavad gita the same demon called the doubt which is in our heart will be removed so he is about to slay the demon of doubt that has arisen in arjuna's mind and is preventing him from discharging his duties we become slack we don't do perform our duties properly and we give so many excuses so all these doubts will be removed when we read bhagavad gita it will give us lot of strength for us to go forward krishna spoke these following words to the grieving arjuna who was completely overpowered by attachment as described before and whose eyes was blurred with brim full of tears so at the end of the first chapter we saw the Ar that arjuna had talked a lot and at the end of it he has thrown away his bow and arrow and he sat down he couldn't even stand his legs hands were shivering his heart pierced by sorrow and krishna also did not talk anything arjuna now had not sought help from krishna he was just talking he was advising and he was giving so many arguments to krishna therefore now krishna doesn't speak but now for the time being temporarily 
the outburst of Arjuna has stopped. So now you will see Lord Krishna will speak. Only as much is needed. The whole Bhagavad Gita is not given. Only to bring out the depression of Arjuna, he will speak as much only. Now, going forward, we will see Sri Bhagavan Vacha. The Lord is telling, Kutastva Kashmalamidam Vishame Samupastitam Anarya Jushtam Aswargyam Akirti Karam Arjuna The Supreme Lord Krishna is speaking. Only two verses now we will speak. As I told you in the last verse, Swam Vivekananda is told that that has the gist of all of Bhagavad Gita. It is very, very necessary for us to come out of that laziness, that lethargy and all the doubts and depression. So see the way Krishna is treating Arjuna now. The Supreme Lord said to Arjuna, my dear Arjuna, how has this delusion overcome you in this hour of peril? It is not befitting an honorable person. It leads not to higher abodes, but to disgrace. When we are handling children, your own children or other people who are in distress and depression, now Krishna teaches us how to approach them. Yes, you should be firm. You should be telling them strong words, but it should be such a way that it should not denounce them. You should not use the words which will bring in negative impact on them but you have to show their greatness you are not doing the right thing your status is something high you have something strong in you why are you in this pitiable condition so you have to raise him to a higher level it is not befitting an honorable person like you now the word as i told you in the last class arya in our sacred book does not refer to any race or ethnic group. The Manuspriti defines an Aryan as highly evolved and cultured person. Aryan connotes goodness like the term perfect gentleman. I also gave you how the term we used here, Aja, Aji. And uh, if you go to the South Indian, this thing it is Ajja, Ajji. Where does it come from? It has come from the word Arya. So it's only denoting Arya is not that which, which was taken up by, you know, Max Muller, inspired by the Britishers to divide Indians, that Aryans were a group of race people, white people who had come from either Russia or Iran or Germany and then came to India. They pushed down all the Dravidians who were there in India and they overpowered India. That was done by the British to just divide and rule. But that was not true, Vivekananda has told many times. And now the present day, the science of genetics also has proved there is no difference between any sort of this Aryans and Dravidian race. Here the genes are the same. Even now, some of the people who want to divide India, like the communists and the liberals and the so-called pseudo-intellectuals, they still harp on the same old thing. They don't even believe in science, in genetical science, which shows that there is no difference at all. They still harp on the old subject. Why? They have some hidden agenda. That is, they have some other thing. Let us not go to those political things. Now, we will come back to our discussion. What is that? To that Aryan means, here he is telling, you are of a great birth. You are from a cultured family. And you have also developed a very good nature in you you are such a great person so this kind of behavior is not befitting it is not for you to behave you should not behave like this now we shall go to see another thing the word used here is partha see while krishna as i told you many times these words are used Arjuna also had many names. Why did he use the word Partha? Partha comes from the name Prita. That was another name for his mother, Kunti. When she was a young girl, Kunti. Now, she had a boon by Durvasumani. What was that? Durvasumani could find out in future. She will not have children 
because she she is going to get some problem husband had got will get some curse in future so when he was pleased by the service of this small girl kunti what did durvasamuni out of his compassion he gave a boon he told if you utter this mantra and call any god like indra chandra vayu varuna surya anybody then that god will come you come to you and by their spiritual power yogic power they will give you a child now this small girl kunti wanted to test it so as a small girl she is unmarried out of curiosity she came and then uttered the mantra and she saw up surya bhagavan is there so she called surya surya bhagavan came gave a child because that mantra has the power in the hand and he went away what to do she is such a small girl what will the society tell even now if there is some such thing the society will criticize you and in the those period that is dwapraga what would be the condition of the society so out of shame out of fear of the society she set that baby into a cradle and put it into like a small boat and set it sail in the river that was taken up by a charioteer and he became karna that was karna by surya like that she was calling different gods and when she called tell utter that mantra and called yama yama raja the god of death what was the child born then yudhishthira dharmaraya yudhishthira then she called the great god of god that is indra then who was born then arjuna so now you can see arjuna he is the son of indra the god of god so the word pratha partha is used you are the son you are by the power of indra you have been born you are such a great person so how did this fear come to you so while krishna is using every word it is denoting something going back and tell you you are such a great person your lineage is something great you are born by the power of indra can you be in this pitiable depression depression can you come down to such a level see bring out the best in them anybody while you are treating somebody who are in depression who are in sorrow you should not denounce them rather tell them the greatness they have that greatness that is what you can see in krishna so somebody had asked me after going through the lecture what is that strength of atman how to bring that strength which is within us so to understand that let me take take you through one explanation of one great swami ji his name was swami chit bhavanand ji he was the disciple of one of the direct disciples of shri ramakrishna that is shivanand ji and what is he telling he is telling yield not o partha to feebleness it does not befit you cast off this petty faint heartedness wake up o vanquishers of the foes now swami chit bhavanand ji is telling the man who fails to face a crisis speaking and, and acting irrelevantly is denounced denounced as a dolt stupid but arjuna is not made of that inferior stuff the training that he has received is superb is literally the vanquisher of the foes poles apart or the feebleness of a coward and the boldness of arjuna who successfully even combated he had gone to fight lord shiva himself he got defeated from shiva that is a different thing but shiva was pleased his, with his vela and he gave him pashupatastra a missile to him so he was so bold even to go and fight with lord shiva that is the strength so arjuna is not a ordinary person another thing you should note and what is that you know in india whenever there is lightning and thunder or whenever you are in fear we are asked to repeat 10 names of whom of arjuna then because who is the god of lightning and thunder indra so that lightning is not going to hit you so we have to 
utter the ten names of arjuna if you utter that then lightning or thunder is not going to strike you and you can come out of any fear see such is the boldness and courage of arjuna that he is so valorous and courageous that his name is taken to overcome the fear of lightning and other fear when you are in the forest or something and such a person now if he behaves like this and run away from the runs away from the battle now instead of repeating his name we will be denouncing him so what are that name arjuna palguna partha kiriti shvetavahana bhibatsa vijaya krishna savyasachi dhananjaya these are the 10 names so whenever you are facing the fear of lightning you repeat this and lightning will not strike you that is what we believe in india and what happened how did this happen in virata parva in mahabharata when arjuna had donned the dress of brahmanala what do you call nowadays you can call it as a uh, see if you go to india in the railway station or the train men dressed like women will come asking for money they called chakkas or something khoja or something like that transgenders so arjuna at the time see they were also in vanavasa just like ramachandra so the last year should be agnatavasa they should not be identified by anybody that was the rules if somebody comes to know that they are pandavas then they had to go to the exile again so they were disguising themselves bhima was disguising himself like a cook arjuna like a transgender wearing the dress of a woman and teaching dance to the daughter of virata and uh, teaching all the other women how to dance the bharatanatyam or whatever now the somehow the kauravas got the scent they are there so they wanted to find out and sent them to exile again so they attacked this virata rajya the kingdom now this uttara the son of virata he went to fight seeing the army of bhishma and other people he was karna he was so afraid he started running running back from the battle who was the charioteer arjuna in the guise of the transgender woman now what did arjuna do he caught ran back and caught hold of this uttara and come you drive the chariot i will fight so where are the weapons all the weapons of the pandavas were hidden in a forest in the shami vriksha a tree shami it is called shami vriksha it was just dressed up like a dead body and tied all the weapons were tied to the tree just like a dead body so that nobody will go and take it away now when he was afraid and even to go towards the dead body he told don't worry tell the name of arjuna ten name of arjuna you will lose the fear he made him to repeat and he repeated and all he got the strength his own name and then arjuna fought and defeated all the kauravas bhishma drona he even defeated karna so he was so valorous that is what now krishna is telling you are such a noble person you are such a great person you are the scorcherer of the enemies that is the word used here scorcherer of the enemies and now you behave like this this is not befitting you see all the best qualities are awoked in him so that is what here the great god shiva also gave you seeing your courage the lord simply krishna chides him for the momentary weakness that has come upon his comrade and seeks to make him whole again why is the term comrade used because arjuna and krishna were equal in age they were friends so whenever krishna used to come to pandavas he used to go see lord krishna is the lord everybody knows he is the lord he used to go and touch the feet of dharmaraya do namaskar to dharma why he was senior in age bhima also senior in age he used to do pranams but to arjuna used to embrace equal in age see the lord is showing us how to treat the elders he used to touch the feet of dharmaraya though he himself was the lord so that is the custom we have to follow in our culture hinduism elders are to be respected all those things that is not divert so he is a comrade now he wants to make his comrade that is arjuna whole again 
now i have to deal with this subject called atmak shraddha what is this atma shraddha self belief vivekananda tells again and again believe in yourself you may believe in all the 330 millions of god in hinduism you may believe in all the gods which have been imported from the west but until unless you believe in yourself there is no success to you tell swami vivekananda the old religion used to tell those who do not believe in god or the vedas were atheist but vivekananda tells the modern religion or i tell you if you don't believe in yourself you are an atheist tell swami vivekananda how to believe myself what is this belief in oneself what is that strength which i have that i should believe now you will see we should understand what that is now here shit bhavanand ji very nicely explains it the manifest world is comprised of two categories what is that purusha and prakriti what is purusha noumenon and what is prakriti the phenomenon purusha or atman the parabrahman the highest intelligence the highest infinite power is noumenon this nature this whole universe created world is phenomenal these are the two things the manifest world is comprised of two categories purusha and prakriti the noumenon and the phenomenon we become feeble weak we think we are weak to the extent one depends upon the phenomenon one becomes manly and courageous to the extent one identifies oneself with the now menan that is your true self many people ask you ramana maharshi used to ask the question who am i in tamil ramana maharshi used to tell nan yar who am i am i this body am i the blood am i the heart am i the brain am i the mind am i the intellect am i the ego no you are beyond that that is that no man and that is purusha that is the atman beyond all these things so you have to identify that is your true nature you are that tattvam asi shweta ketu you are that parabrahman that is strength full of strength that gives strength to everything it shining sun and the stars and everything shines So that is the power which is within all of you you have that infinite strength in you when you identify with that then you become strong and courageous when you identify with the phenomenon you become weak and feeble see now what are you to identify with your true, true nature that is self belief that is atma shraddha that is the belief you should have then you will see how courage will come out you can see how the veil will come out you become strong so that is the thing which i wanted to tell you taking up this uh, two verses of krishna whereby we have to understand so many wonderful things one becomes manly and courageous to the extent one identifies oneself with the now menan now i will tell you why you are called the men or called purusha and the women are called prakriti or women because simply because you are mustache and uh, uh, beard that you are called purusha no simply because they don't have that they are women or stri no that is not those the leaning towards purusha is more they become men the meaning the leaning towards prakriti towards nature is more they become women if you to start manifesting and med- meditating and thinking of the phenomenon in your next life maybe you to become a woman so it's your leaning towards purusha that's why what is the meaning of purusha pure sheti iti purushaha pura is this prakriti this body with nine openings the one who resides within that town is called purusha 
the women too it is the same purusha who is present but their leaning is more towards prakriti the nature phenomenon that's why they are called stri the purusha you are called purusha because you are leaning towards this is more that's why you are called purusha that's the difference so that's why there is no difference between men and women all are prakriti we are all nature we are in the phenomenon if you think more about your true nature atman then you become the now men and the strength will start coming this identification is atma bodha strength and atman are identical weakness is condemned downright by the upanishad what is katopanishad telling nayam atma balahine na labhya you cannot realize god that atman cannot be attained by the weak tells katopanishad weak cannot that's why you can understand why swam vivekananda used to tell before reading geeta learn to play football why with your bicep strong with your leg strong with your body strong you can understand bhagavad geeta more with a weak mind with a weak body how can you understand the greatness of lord krishna who was such a great king maker the greatest warrior of that time the teachings of bhagavad gita if you are weak in your body weak in your mind that's the reason why vivekananda told learn to play football before going to play, uh, understand gita means not that you should go and start playing football read between the lines means meaning you should become physically and mentally strong that is the idea behind it so upanishads are again and again telling nayam atma balahine na labhya so this atman or god cannot be attained by the weak is the upanishadic pronouncement and the message of krishna is based on this fundamental principle that he is now rising rousing in arjuna to be firm of body formidable of mind constant of character that's what swam vivekananda told we want people with mas- what is that muscles of iron nerves of steel and the mind like that of the thunderbolt we want people with muscles of iron nerves of steel and the mind and intellect like that of the thunderbolt vivekananda tells see that is what krishna is telling only vivekananda is putting it in the modern language attracted to to the modern youth to be firm of body formidable of mind constant of character excellences like these are all born out of strength so that is atma shraddha that is belief in oneself so now you can understand what is atma shraddha what is belief in oneself this world and the next two are for the strong alone the weak cannot get anything right conduct originates from strength straight forwardness comes from strength even enjoyment traces itself to strength practice of yoga is possible because of it attainment of liberation moksha is enabled by strength only reaching godhood is impossible without strength all divine traits have their source to strength that is your atman that is your true nature you are the source of strength identify with that now men and then you see how strength will start coming out of you that is what krishna is doing to arjuna now taking him to the source of the strength in strength lies the key and the clue to all the teachings of lord krishna exalted life begins with atma bodha the rousing of the atman which expresses itself as strength strength see what is the statement of vivekananda we have to go back again and again to vivek. strength is life weakness is death strength is felicity now let us come to the words of shri ramakrishna paramahamsa what does he tell about this he who is soft and weak minded like the soaked puffed rice you know flattened rice chida first of all it is soft if you soak it in water it will become still soft so ramakrishna is giving this example what is he telling he who is very soft naram and weak minded like the puffed rice or the flattened rice soaked in milk 
he is good for nothing he cannot achieve anything great but the strong and virile one is heroic he is the accomplisher of everything in life tells ramakrishna now we shall go deeper and see always i try to connect it to our present life to our life now you may have the doubt that arjuna is being forced to kill people it is wrong krishna should have not done that should have allowed him to make peace so not go to war that will be the idea let me take you through one thing here the woman in the family whether it is your wife or the daughter or the mother or all well dressed up and walking around on the streets freely without any fear glad we must understand that is happening only because there are men guarding your country taking the weapon as soldiers kshatriyas you should understand what is that there are people who are willing to widow their own wives to protect your wives and mothers and children and daughters see the soldier give up their life and they widow their wife why to protect your mother your sister your daughters and wife they are willing to give up they are called kshatriyas somebody because somebody is defending our country our land with their lives our children are going to the school with safety otherwise they would have been kidnapped and they are willing to orphan their own children the soldiers they are called kshatriyas they are willing to orphan their own children they are willing to widow their own wives why to protect you people to protect the country to protect the honor of the country now yes the soldier is gone to the battlefield to protect all your honor and the country has he gone to die no he is willing to die there is a ocean of difference between he wants to die but he is willing to die to protect the country the countrymen and honor this is the difference between wanting to die and willing to die we are everything whether it is we are having everything wo everything whether business entertainment spirituality our studies safely coming to the ashram like this and studies only because those people the kshatriyas are willing to give up their life to protect us now if those kshatriyas the warriors will tell that oh they are my kid the terrorists are my kith and kin the criminals are my kith of the same race so i am not going to protect you kill them i will sit aside let them come and do do all the criminal activities will you be safe can anybody be safe then the kshatriya has to do his duty isn't it we have to do our proper duty that is what is happening in arjuna arjuna is a warrior who has to defend the country defend the people defend the honor now he doesn't want to do that now you can understand why krishna is telling do your duty fight so now we shall still connect all these teachings of wonderful krishna to our life and understand it in a better way we will take the help of another than another great sanyasin was the president of our order long back swami ranganathanand ji maharaj swami ranganathanand ji maharaj is telling in this third verse of the second chapter krishna uses the word klaibyam mas magamaha partha do not give to klaibyam 
actually it means a person of neuter gender klybia means person of neuter gender what you call an apumsaka neither man nor woman this is called klybia what does it suggest here it suggests weakness faint heartedness all these meanings attached to this word klybia naitatvai upapadyate it does not befit you you have such a noble nature heroism courage everything you have kshudram hrudaya durbalyam tektvo tishta parantapa so he was sitting down he couldn't even stand arjuna the great warrior has crumbled down broken sunk in the chariot in that krishna in that condition shri krishna says to him uttishta what is uttishta stand up wake up rise up the first sign that strength has come to you is when you stand up when you are still lying down the old weakness is there so stand up it is as powerful word by krishna here as dealing with the awakening of a human being awakening so he's trying to awaken arjuna awaken that spirit that atman within us that now men and stand on your feet and be men so are we not standing on our feet is that enough all the animals are standing on their own feet what is meant by that no dependence upon anybody you should depend upon that strength though you may be standing on your feet but you will be always ready to run and escape that is not standing on the feet and be men so this klybhyam give it up kshudram hrudaya durbalyam give up your weakness of the heart which is kshudram means very lowly arjuna stand up face up to your problem this is what shri krishna tells to arjuna and to all of us when we are in difficulties and we not we do not know our inner strength we think we cannot proceed any more or we break down then somebody has to come and give us new strength that strength is already there within us but somebody must give that touch then only will that strength manifest we all need it in fact in our life we can see if one is weak you go and strengthen him or her by a few strong words then he or she really feels stronger even appreciating a person increases his or her strength it is said in the ramayana what is that you all know ramayana when people when the vanaras were sent to search mother sita only hanuman was given the task of going to south india all others went in different condition different uh, parts of india hanuman was sent now hanuman though he was a great powerful person as a small child he was ready to fly to the sun to eat him thinking that it was a red mango so powerful and the so many gods and goddesses had given him so much of boon he was very powerful but because of that manifestation of strength you should be going and being too much mischievous to all the rishis and munis when they were meditating used to pull their hairs used to trouble them so one of the rishis saw him so much mischievous as a small child and now he thought in future he has to do so much of work now i should not curse him so he gave a very mild curse telling that you will forget all your strength until unless somebody reminds you of your strength in future when you have to do some work of the god so hanuman forgot all his strength he became weak that is what we are now we have all of us have that infinite strength within us now the guru has to awaken that strength within you as vivekananda used to tell that wonderful story that lion which was as a cub it was in the womb of the mother lioness it jumped upon a flock of sheep and when it about to eat it it somehow fell down into the water because it was carrying that baby it was pregnant it died and this baby was given this lion cub came out 
and it grew among the flock of sheep it doesn't know that it is a lion it has heard only the bleating of the sheep seeing them eating grass it also started eating grass and it grew among the though it was it had become so strong more stronger than all the sheep together it was bleating and bleating ma 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 and eating grass and it thought it was weak one day another great lion came to eat the sheep and saw the lion its own some uh, relative of his in the amongst the, this thing so he jumped all the sheep ran this also ran this lion in the form of the sheep or the sheep in the form of the lion that ran this lion real lion caught hold of it then instead of uh, roaring it was bleating ma 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 leave me i am a sheep i have to run away <laughs> no no you are a lion come here no no i am a sheep then it took to the water and see your reflection you are not a sheep you are a lion it saw the reflection yes don't bleat roar like me it start roaring then it came to know its real nature then it got back the courage of the lion swam vekananda tells this wonderful story you are all that hidden lions in all of you you are now acting like sheep bleating like sheep eating grass and bleating like sheep you are that atman infinite atman now hanuman forgot his true nature his strength so now he has come to south india they were all afraid how to go across this ocean or the sea then angada and jambavanta started reminding you have so much of strength you have so much of wonderful powers then he started growing and growing and growing and that one leap he crossed to sri lanka so like that all of us have that wonderful strength like hanuman in us we have forgotten our true nature because we are just interested in the pleasures and making money and enjoying these worldly things and we have forgotten our true nature so go back to your true nature then you see how the strength will come everything will come everything that is strong will come to you says vivekananda that is what by the story of ramayana you all know that story of ramayana hanuman was asked to go to south you will succeed hanuman took up the job then angada jambavanta somebody else praised hanuman you were such a great soul you have such great achievements in your life all that made hanuman feel greater and greater confidence in himself in finding mother sita he was succeeded that's why that whole chapter when he found sita and brought that wonderful news to the paramatman the lord himself he brought happiness to lord ramachandra he brought happiness to mother sita that's why it's called sundara kand and when people are in sorrow depression they are asked to read this sundara kand why because you will get strength lord hanuman in the form of the guru bought that union of mother sita and rama again so that guru will awaken that strength within you that is the need of the guru so now i think we have already come to the end of our time we have so many things to discuss to bring in the strength in us in social relations you can do two things to each other either destroy one's confidence or increase the self confidence mostly we have done the negative thing all of us are doing the negative thing we create the fear of ghosts and darkness in the children just to see that they don't do mischiefs we give something and make them weak and weak and weak but here krishna is telling we have to build up their self confidence we should not destroy one self confidence mostly all of us have been doing the negative thing we have destroyed each other self confidence speak of his or her great achievements that will immediately make him or her feel yes i can this is how shri krishna is dealing with arjuna stand up face up to your problems do not become weak any type of weakness has no virtue about it one great lesson vedanta our scriptures tells us what is that weakness and virtue can never go together virtue is strength weakness is no virtue at all where there is no courage there is no virtue veeraha 
is a great word in sanskrit meaning heroic person in that person only you find virtue in weak people where is virtue see the fox or the jackal is weak that's why it becomes cunning if you become weak you will become cunning if you become bold strong then that cunningness will go it will become straightforward you will not be afraid of anything if you want to become a fox cunning like a fox then you can become weak so then only they become positive if they have strength we somehow did not do so we often call a good for nothing a goody goody person as good the cow the buffalo is also very good it doesn't do anything it doesn't tell a lie but a cow is a cow a man even though he tells a lie and does the wrong thing a man is greater than this cow and animal or the other thing so should you become a good person like a cow always simply quite no a goody goody person is of no use that is what vivekananda tells and krishna is telling because he or she doesn't harm anybody you call them good he or she has not the power to harm anybody where is the goodness in it where is virtue in it so this is how our judgment has been wrong for centuries that is why swami ranganathanand ji maharaj is telling i say sometimes tell all parents coming to the ashrama and saying if there is a good for nothing boy or girl in the house swami ji here is a boy take him and make him a sanyasin in your ashram why because he is good for nothing the thing that if they are good for nothing make them sanyasins or some priest if he can't read mathematics if he doesn't do no computers if he doesn't read well then make him a priest because he is good for nothing make him a sanyasin is good for nothing that is the attitude for centuries he will be very good for your ashrama it means that what is not good for the world is good for spiritual life the truth is just the opposite so the whole our whole thinking has become defective in this matter that heroic attitude was not there strength and fearlessness were not there and today vivekananda comes and preaches only this one great message strength and fearlessness shakti and abhihi abhihi this is the thing word which falls on the society like a bombshell from upanishad tells vivekananda what is that be fearless be fearless abhihi abhihi one of the greatest uh, freedom fighters in india writes about swami vivekananda and the discovery of india vivekananda gave a spirit of courage to our people a strength a spirit of manliness is the biggest contribution from any great teacher and so we need this kind of teaching in a big way in olden days krishna gave it he was the very embodiment of strength and fearlessness and the whole of vedanta is a message of strength and fearlessness never will you find any stress on weakness in vedanta or bhagavad gita always be fearless be fearless so brahman god or atman the atma shakti the self confidence the ultimate source of the universe is brahman human being is abhayam see we always replicate god or put god with a hand like this what is that be fearless why you can see god's hand many he will be having many god no sorry hands he will be catching weapons one hand will be like this one hand will be like this you see gods will be like even goddesses also this is giving boon this is fearlessness be fearless i am here to protect you so god is fearlessness god himself is fearless you are the children of god and why do you fear what is there to fear that is what god the brahman the highest the ultimate source of the universe and the human being is abhayam fearlessness what is the name of god fearlessness and when you attain god will you become weak you become fearless so abhayam vai prapto si janakah in brahadaranika upanishad says that sage yagnavalkya tells king janaka janaka 
Janaka had got the highest knowledge of wisdom, the Brahma Gnana, the knowledge of God. So, Brahadaranika Upanishad, Janaka is being told by Yagnavalkya, Janaka, you have achieved a state of fearlessness. See, he has achieved Brahma Gnana, he has achieved his true nature, he has realized God, and Yagnavalkya is telling, you have attained fearlessness. So, your nature is fearlessness. So that is what you have to believe in that. That is what Krishna is reminding Arjuna. So, even in the next class, I think I will take up the same topic and I have to discuss so many wonderful things which will give us strength because it's already time. I will stop the discussion. Even in the next class, I will continue from where I had stopped this discussion because it is strength giving. It is essence of Bhagavad Gita. So maybe we, we may have to take another two class or one class, we do not know. Whatever it might be, it gives us so much of courage, strength and fearlessness. We will think of it, meditate on it and become fearless. And so now you can come to know God realization is not becoming like an inert thing. God realization is becoming fearless. Total freedom. Total no dependence upon this world. You become completely independent. That is freedom. So now you have come to know what is God realization. You have come to know what is your true nature. What is self-belief. Belief in oneself. So many beautiful things we have come to know by the wonderful discussion on Bhagavad Gita. We will conclude today's study of Bhagavad Gita with one verse from the meditation on Bhagavad Gita. Mukam karoti vachalam Gumlam bhayate girim Yat kripa tamaham vande Paramananda Madhavam Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Rama Krishna Arpanamastu Mukam Karoti Vachalam The dumb person who can't even talk can be made as a great lecturer or orator. Mukam karoti vachala pangum langhayate girim. A lame person who doesn't have leg, leg can be made to climb and cross the jump the mountain. How? Yat kripa tamaham vande. If we have the grace of the Lord, all that is impossible can be made possible. So, if you think of the Lord who is within your heart, which is your true nature, miracles happen. Impossible can be done. Possible. That's why Vivekananda tells there is nothing impossible in this world for you. You can do anything and everything because you have that infinite strength within you. See now, Mukam Karo Tivachalam. So everything is replete with meaning wonderful things to enjoy. So this is joy, this is enjoyment of the strength which we have. The other material thing is not enjoyment. This is real enjoyment. See, maybe for weeks together, if you remember this verse, you will feel that joy and strength coming out of you. So let us meditate on this wonderful strength giving verse of Sri Krishna. And as I told you in the beginning itself, please get this verse by heart. Memorize it. Whenever you are in depression, whenever you get into that mode of weakness, remember this. Chant it loudly. You see how strength will start coming to you.